folks, HR Funk here. If any of you are familiar with the history of the 357 Magnum cartridge, you'll recall that in 1935, Smith & Wesson first chambered that round in their large N-frame revolver. 20 years later, they chambered it in the smaller K-frame revolver. If there was any problem at all with those first 357 Magnum revolvers, it was their size and their weight. So when Smith & Wesson chambered it in the K-frame, they packaged or they combined the authority of the 357 Magnum cartridge with the portability and the fast handling characteristics of the K-frame and they came up with a true winner. Now the original K-frame Combat Magnum as it was labeled had a 4 inch barrel which was just about perfect for uniform duty carry for police officers. But for their detective counterparts it was not necessarily ideal for personnel who were in plain clothes. That's why shortly thereafter they came out with the K-Frame Combat Magnum, but with a two and a half inch barrel. And the two and a half inch Combat Magnum is the subject of our video today. Let's take a closer look at this classic revolver. Perhaps not surprisingly, the two and a half inch Combat Magnum shares many of the features of its full size brother. For example, it has a full grip profile so that someone who's shooting the powerful 357 Magnum cartridge can get a good full grip. And you'll notice on my revolver, I've added the Tyler T adapter just to give me a little bit more to get a hold of when I'm shooting it. And this is one of the nice things about a revolver. Adapting a revolver grip to fit the shooter's hand is fairly simple. That's a rather recent development with semi-autos, but it's been part of the characteristics of a revolver for a long time. The K-Frame Combat Magnum also maintains the adjustable target style sights with the white outline rear and red ramp front that you find on a full size revolver. And it maintains the full six shot capacity of the full size revolver. Unlike going to a J-Frame revolver, which would only have five shots of a comparable 38 or nowadays 357 Magnum. And also with the J-Frame and smaller revolvers, you would not have that full size grip profile. Something to be aware of with the two and a half inch combat magnum is the fact that the extractor rod is slightly shorter than it is on the four inch version. Reason being, when the barrel was abbreviated, the extractor rod had to be shortened slightly to be able to fit. The consequence of that is when you extract full length 357 magnum casings, they may not want to come completely out of the chamber. So you need to make sure you give it a good authoritative push and you still might have to pull a few of them out. The two and a half inch combat magnum has the semi target hammer and the smooth service style trigger, both of which make it very nice to shoot in either double action mode or single action mode. And also, as you can see, the fit and finish is quite nice on these revolvers. This revolver was manufactured in 1980, but pretty much across the line with the Model 19 slash combat magnums, They've been very good looking firearms, very well made, and again the fit and finish has always been first rate. The other thing that's true of the Combat Magnum is they have very nice trigger actions. This trigger pull is extremely smooth, and one of the reasons for that is when they went from the N-frame cylinder to the K-frame cylinder, they're using a smaller, lighter piece of material to rotate so it turns a little bit easier. That's not the only reason the trigger feels so good, but that's part of the reason. And again, it has great inherent accuracy. We're gonna start shooting this in just a couple of minutes, and you'll get to see just how the two and a half inch combat magnum performs. Now there are some shooters out there that believe there is something of an Achilles heel to the K-Frame Combat Magnum. Specifically, the concern is if you shoot these revolvers with very hot 357 Magnum ammunition for a long time, that you will eventually crack the forcing cone back here. If you notice, one of the things that was done to get the barrel to fit in the K-Frame is this bottom portion of the radius was shaved off. I think that concern about the forcing cone cracking is something that was very overstated over the years. Probably a lot of it was stated by companies other than Smith & Wesson who were trying to sell folks their products. Uh, this particular revolver has only ever been fired with 357 Magnum ammunition. Now I shoot the 158 grain variety. The culprit for breaking forcing cones was usually the very hot loaded 125 grain 
357 Magnum ammunition that became fashionable in the early 1980s. Shooting this with the 158 grain ammunition, I've never had an issue with it. That's what I'm going to be shooting today when we start to work on the target back here and we can take a look at the accuracy and see how it performs. I don't think anybody is going to realistically question the power and the effectiveness of the 158 grain 357 Magnum cartridge. Okay folks, if you watch many of my videos, you know I normally start out doing my accuracy testing at seven yards. But today, I've got a revolver with target sights, a full-size grip, and it's capable of being fired in a single action mode, so I'm going to deviate from that today, and I'm going to do my accuracy testing from 50 feet. Let's see how it looks. And here is our 50 foot accuracy. Not too bad. This was my very last shot and I saw the sight go just before the trigger broke. This was the first five right here. Oops, and uh, apparently my target died because it's now falling. But even with the one errant shot, not too bad. Okay, let's switch gears. We're gonna do a couple of quick seven yard failure drills. We'll go two to the body, one to the head. These are gonna be double action and we'll see how the combat magnum does. And there was no problem there keeping the body shots in the body and the head shots in the head. I did manage to pull one shot a little bit low there, but if you look at the target actually, that's pretty much a center punch right through the middle of the body with a 158 grain 357 Magnum. I have a feeling that's going to take a portion of his spine out the back of his body on the way through, or on the way out rather. So again, no problem whatsoever. That full power 357 Magnum load does speak with some authority. You definitely feel the recoil, but it is not impossible to control. Okay, this next drill should be fun. I'm going to do six quick precision shots to the head. The first three are going to be double action shots. The next three are going to be single action shots. I'm going to draw the revolver, cock it, and then fire out that single action shot. And we'll just see how much difference there is in the time it takes to fire the double action shot and to fire the single action shot. And here we go. My very first double action shot, I pulled low right here. After that, the next two were up there. The three single action shots were actually pretty easy to keep in there. I wasn't timing that, but I didn't feel like there was much difference in the time it took to fire the double action shot as opposed to the single action shots. And therein lies the true beauty of the double action revolver. It can be fired single action if you need to make a precision shot. And as you just saw, that single action shot can be made pretty quickly. Well, since 
it looks like it's getting ready to start raining on me out here, I'm going to finish things up with a few quick double action shots, uh, double taps, double action shots, and then I'll have a few parting comments before we leave. And there's our last look at the target. All those double taps stayed center chest without any problem whatsoever. Again, that full grip profile gives a good deal of controllability with the two and a half inch combat magnum and its inherent accuracy and its trigger don't hurt matters either. And there we have it folks. This is a classic gun review that I've been wanting to do for a long time. The two and a half inch combat magnum just like the other Members of the Combat Magnum line were tremendous in their day. They're still fine firearms if you find them on the used market. I don't believe that Smith & Wesson has put the Combat Magnum in its classic line. I think they've had other offerings, but I don't believe the K-Frame Combat Magnum has been in there. In fact, the K-Frame Magnums in generally have disappeared from their line, other than they brought back a re-engineered version of the Model 66 a couple of years ago. I don't have any experience with that particular revolver. It's probably a fine firearm, but I also don't think it's quite the same as the classic Combat Magnum K-Frame revolvers. Again, this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. This particular revolver is one that I purchased about 15 years ago probably from a good friend who has since passed away. I'm hoping he's up there today smiling down. He always enjoyed shooting. I'm sure the idea that I'm out here shooting this fine revolver that I purchased from him is something that would make him happy. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those below. And until next time, as always, good shooting. Bye-bye.